Can everyone hear me? Yeah. Welcome yes. Everyone. Thank you for joining. Yeah. I will start with introducing myself. I'm Vladimir. I I'm a full-time engineer. This includes cloud engineering, DevOps engineering, platform engineering, site reliability engineering. I throughout my career I had all of these roles, been doing different projects, uh, and technologies are very similar to each other. Approaches are different. Uh, about my journey. I got my first job when I was 18. I have 12 years of experience. If you add these two numbers, you'll find out how old am I. <laughs> Eight years out of this, I'm in cloud and five years in containers. And for the next 21, uh, sorry. Also, I have a bunch of certificates, but that's my, minor, not, no really need to concentrate on these. Uh, practice is more valuable. And for the next, 21 days, I'll guide you into the world of Terraform, AWS, Git, GitHub, and Kubernetes. Once again, thank you very much, everyone, for joining. I'm, extra I'm extremely excited to see all you here. And let's start. And yeah, by the way, before I forgot, uh, also with me, uh, there is Geoffrey with me my uh, right hand, my uh, um, assistant. He will be helping you out uh, in this class as well uh, by reviewing pull requests, by, help you, by helping you to fix issues with code if you have any, and any other assistance in the chat. And I will explain further down the road what is pull request, so no need to worry. Geoffrey, uh, your turn. Hi guys, like um, like Ladimi mentioned, I'm Geoffrey. I'm a software and a DevOps engineer. Uh, currently, I have close to three plus years experience in the industry. So I'll be assisting Vladimir in code reviews, even uh, making suggestions to your PR and code on better ways to improve your PR. So I'm really excited for this program. And I can't wait to meet you all and get to interact and collaborate with all of you. That's all for me. Very good. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, and basically, that's all for introductions. Let's dive into building star, uh, building stuff. And I promise this is the last slide that you ever see in these 21 days. The rest will be either me explaining something like live or simply sharing my screen, either in terminal or in code, code editor, demonstrating, explaining, presenting. No more slides. So um, first thing first, uh, let's go through the tools that we'll be using in uh, this program. Um, To start with, uh, most likely everyone has already seen. If you haven't yet get the invite, for sure send me a message either through email or through LinkedIn. Uh, you you should be in this chat. This will be our primary uh, conversation method outside of uh, the daily class. So make sure you're there. Make sure you can. Uh, you can see all the messages and uh, and communicate. Second, uh, mo very important thing is Trello board. You should be able to see something like this. Have uh, have everyone got a chance to to review the Slack channel and Trello board? Does anyone need help or not yet uh, joined these two things? If, if yes, uh, definitely let us know either in chat or in email, um, and we will invite you. We will invite you. We will have you joined. 
Very cool. So, um, the prerequisite that we had is to install initial tools that we had. This is starting our accounts, means AWS account, starting a GitHub account, uh, installing Terraform on your laptop, installing AWS command line, Git, and code editor of your choice. Again, uh, we not spend time configuring this like right now. The, this is just about installing some software tools on your laptop. So in case you have any problems, in case you need any help, strategy right now is simple. Uh, just send us a message. We'll help you out. We'll sort it out for you. We'll get you there. So the class is about writing infrastructure as code, writing infrastructure as code using Terraform in AWS environment. Also, we'll cover some Kubernetes uh, topics as well. But uh, how to say that? In infrastructure and is code, infrastructure is not the most important thing. And believe me or not, code is also not that important as another thing that very often ignored. And this is basically how you structure your code, how you where you store your code, how you track changes, and how you version control it. So if your automation is not inside Git, this means you have no automation at all. So automation should always be stored in a Git repository. And that's the topic of our first class. That's the first thing that we'll do is we will set up infrastructures called repository on GitHub so we can version control, store our, our, our code, share results of our work, review it, and collaborate with each other effectively. So basically, here is the first task. Uh, it's not yet on your Trello board. I will add it to your as a home task right after we finish the call. And what we'll do now is I'll basically demonstrate on in, on practice in action how we how we supposed to work with github uh, some of you are more experienced some of you might see this as very trivial thing and in fact yes uh, we will start from simple to more complex and add on top of each other towards building a final solution and it is extremely important not to skip any parts, and it is extremely important, it's crucial, I would even say, to follow proper uh, workflow of contributing changes and proper workflow of using Git, using branches, and using pull request. And that's what this task is about. Basically, we'll create our first repo, we'll clone it, we'll create some branches, create a pull request. And even if you know you're comfortable, I encourage you to work through this with me once again. So we establish a contract between each other about how we collaborate, how we review, how we communicate, how we share the code. And basically, without further ado, let's start. I'll go to github.com and create a new repository. So 
immediately after that, we can, for example, follow these instructions, or we can just clone this repository using this URL and using this command, git clone and the repo URL. It will tell us that we cloned an empty repository. We'll step into this folder. And let's do some changes. Let's create our first commit. I will open the same, the same path. In my case, it's my user, uh, user home directory slash project slash Terraform in 21 days in the code editor. I am using VS Code. If you have your own preferred code, ed code editor, feel free to use it as you see fit. But I'd recommend that you stick to this one just for the sake of consistency. So you so it will be as similar as possible to what I will be showing showing to you. We'll create a file. Let's call it readme.nd and add some text to it. Save. Terminal and make a commit. We will first git add. Then we will make a simple commit. Minus M means enter the message of our commit. Also, I will remain the branch into main and I will push. When we get back to the repository on GitHub, when we refresh, we'll see this content of this readme.md and my initial commit. And from now, interesting part starts. This is supposed to be the only, the first and the only one commit that you do directly into main and this is extremely important we should treat main main branch as our production deployment as our final project it should be always deployable always work working in the working state and each changes that we contribute into it should be validated, tested on a, in a separate, isolated environment and reviewed using code review and pull requests. And ideally, like in 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 one hundred percent real scenarios, there will be some automatic checks that will simply not allow us to push anything or merge anything to main before they complete it successfully and green. Very important, pay attention here. Every time we create, we start a new task and we will keep repeating this for the entire 21 day. Every time we start a new task, we need to create a new branch. We can do this using git checkout minus B. And after minus B, there is a branch name that would like we would like to specify. We've started our new next task. We created a new branch. And now only after that, we are allowed to make changes into our code base. 
I'll switch back to code editor and write something else into our file. We are using branches and pull requests. In just a second, I'll explain what is pull requests in case you are unaware to track changes. Welcome to the course. That means removed. I, we've made our changes. Right now, that's a simple text file. Later, it will be code, scripts, templates, configurations, anything. We can run git add again. We run git commit. And we run git push. Curious what we do next. When we get back to our user interface, we'll see our second branch, two branches. And this one means it is one commit ahead, which means there is one more commit in this branch if we compare it to our main branch. And what we need to do to integrate our changes back to main is create a pull request. A uh, pull request is a very misleading term. Uh, it very often people confuse it with git pull, but these are completely different things. So git pull is when you pull latest commits from the remote uh, from the remote git and pull request is when you have one one branch separate branch and you are creating a request to essentially merge your changes from your source branch into the target branch and for example there is perhaps you heard about this an alternative called gitlab and in GitLab, it is called merge requests. And it is significantly uh, more clear from this name what, what it is doing. So yeah, pay attention here. When I press create pull request, I can see what commits from my branch went there and what files have I changed. So what, 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 what essentially it means. So previously there was this one, welcome to the course. After that, I added this completely new line. We are using branches and pull requests to track changes. And I've slightly edited this line, but GitHub tracks changes line by line usually. And, um, Basically, red means it was removed, obviously, and green means it was added into our code base. And once we have created our pull request, we are not yet done. And you should never rush over here uh, at this stage. This one is also quite a significant part. Um, you'll need to copy the link to this pull request and send it to me and Geoffrey so we can review it, like showing a home task to your teacher. So, And it's not only about education. In real teams, in real setups, you also need to go through this process of reviewing your pull requests, merge requests, whatnot. This allows to everyone in the team make stay up to date with the latest changes. Make sure everyone have agreement about what's happening in the code. 
and basically uh, fix issues and that you might haven't noticed, suggest improvements. And we are in this program, in this process, we are mocking the how it's done in real teams. So basically, once you have, once you think you've done, uh, you are copying the link to this pull request and sending it to our shared group chat. Here is the sample of my pull request. And what I will do is request Geoffrey to review this pull request. Geoffrey, please review my pull request. And this is how I, this is what I am expecting from you guys when you work on your home tasks. Uh, every time you complete a task, you need to create, you need to create a pull request. You need to send it for review. Geoffrey, it's your turn. Please review my pull request. I just reviewed the pull request and I've approved the pull request. Very, very good. And for, for the sake of example, please reply in the chat as well. All right. Okay, while Geoffrey is typing his message, let me show how it looks on GitHub site. So basically, this gray arrow is what you should be looking for. And this, either me or Geoffrey, depends on who is available at the moment, should mark this pull request as approved. And you should, again, see this message and you should see these small sometimes green sometimes gray arrow once pull request is approved you can merge your pull request uh, you can just hit merge i um, i prefer when i do my own contributions when I work my, when I do my job, I prefer doing squash and merge. And later down the road, I will explain the difference. But it's not critical, it's up to you how exactly you want to merge it. Confirm squash and merge. Um, and this is how we supposed to contribute into our the repository info our code base so just to reiterate and repeat uh, one second let me take it from my notes So every time you start a new task, you need to go through the following steps. Check out main, pull latest changes. We haven't done this yet, and I will show you uh, these uh, right, right after we start, we finish this task and start the next one. We have something else in our plan for today. 
After that, you'll create a new branch out of main. You make your changes, you commit them into the new branch. This is also called a feature branch. You will push, you will create a pull request, you will send it to this chat so, you, so we can review it. After the pull request is merged, well, after pull request is reviewed and approved, we can merge. Very important, make sure you follow these steps and you'll never get lost. Your code will be clear, concise, and, and easy to follow. So uh, having said that, uh, I see several uh, raised hands. Um, so probably before we start next task, I'd be happy to answer your questions. So Sandeep, please let yeah. me know what questions you have. Hey Vlad, thanks. Thanks for that details. I'm just checking if there are options in GitHub uh, to add the uh, reviewer, like you and the other guy, so that you get an email saying that who has raised a PR and what are the changes message. Yes, it is possible to add. Uh, it is done through code owner's file, but um, we prefer that you send us pull requests in this chat, okay. uh, if possible. Um, because if if you if you hesitate to do this in public because the group might be rather large, you can send in private. But I still encourage you to do this to share sure. with our team because also there is a chance that you might get some assistance from other guys, right? And That's right. in fact, I'll encourage you to support each other as well. Uh, and kudos to Boris for jumping in uh, into the conversation that we had yesterday, even though he was not supposed to do this. It's very welcome and I appreciate uh, helping each other. So we're basically building a community, a team. We're networking with each other. We're making new connections and being active here will ma maybe help you sometimes in the future. Who knows? Maybe the person you'll assist is uh, a CTO of some promising company who will invite you yeah. tomorrow or, or to, to, to work there or something like that. Sure. OK. Uh, any other questions? Hey, Vladimir, this is Sanjeev. Hey, so... Sanjeev. Hey, thanks. Um, so, so it's like the format of the presentation is you're going to go against the prop and the concepts, explain all the hands-on commands. Um, so, can you can you kindly make the terminal a little bit large? I mean, I'm not able to like zoom it a bit. And then, is the expectation that we do the home tasks for the day after the class? Uh, yes, uh, that's right. Uh, first of all, thank you for the feedback. I will improve the scale right now as I speak. Can everyone see everything uh, everything better? Yep. yep. OK, very good. So regarding completing of your home tasks. So these, I'll admit, so previous cohort that I had, we completed it in like three months. But we had meetings uh, two times a week. So this one is significantly more intensive. Uh, we meeting daily. And ideally, ideally, yes. Ideally, I'll be extremely happy. And it will be very like useful for you if you complete this task as we go, right? So day one. One home task, day two, second home task, and so on. But I completely understand that we all people, we all have other commitments, and sometimes we might not be able to catch up. And this is completely okay. Yes, the course is called Terraform in 21 days. And if you complete it in 21 days, that's excellent. But if not, I will not run away from you. Geoffrey will not run away from you. We will stick around in the chat 
continue helping you out, answering your questions, reviewing your pull requests. And probably for a couple more months, you'll, you'll have a chance to catch up and complete everything in your own pace. But like fastest you can go is 21 days. Cool. Uh, anytime you have a question, please use this uh, raise hand functionality. Yeah. Uh, whenever we have a pause, uh, whenever I, I uh, whenever we see feed, for example, there is a long Terraform apply that we should wait for, uh, or something else. Yeah, some long uh, like operation, downloading some large file or something like that. Every time. This happens. I'll be getting back into the into the chat and reviewing your questions, giving you answers. Okay. I also saw one more ask from Ritika to uh, scale scale up my screen. Uh, can everyone confirm if my screen is good enough? Is if my screen is visible? Okay, if not, please, very good. If not, please let me know. We'll in, in, increase it even further. Okie dokie. So the second task is to get started with Terraform. We assume that you already have installed. Once again, if not, let us let me know in the chat. We'll assist you with that. Otherwise, there is a decent getting started tutorial directly from Terraform. So what I'm what I'm sharing with you is not, I would say, not a secret tribal knowledge that we will follow. Um, we'll make some certain assumptions that there is also AWS CLI and access key and secret key configured. If not, you can refer to the original install required tool tasks. It will guide you through what you should have done, what you need to do. And as I mentioned again, if you need help, let me know. But for now, I will do this. We are starting a new task. Can anyone, anybody, Remind me, what should be the process? What should I do first? If you want to answer this question, please raise your hands and I'll be happy to hear you. Yes, Vitor. Hi, Vladimir. Uh, if I remember correctly, you should do a checkout for a new branch using the git checkout minus B and the name of the branch so okay you that's yes. it, I guess. very good thank you very much we have several alternatives alternative opinions which is love um, say? git pull git pull good good, good suggestion also ahmed uh, what, what else you can add I was going to hard git pull. Uh, so you 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 first of all ensure that um, your local environment is exactly the same. Mm -hmm. It's the uh, your 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 main. So you pull first, then you create the branch. Okay, very good. N nice discussion. Uh, we forgot one more thing. First, we need to check out our main branch. And only after that, we can git pull. So here is what happened. We've created the commit to alternative branch. We've created a pull request and updated our main branch. And what we should do next is, what, what happened is our local main has changed if we were to compare it with this uh, with this branch or with remote GitHub branch. So let me show you. Here we have two commits. 
And the latest commit is update readme, the one that we created through our pull request. And if we run git log minus two, we will only see our initial commit. So never forget that our main branch is main, and it should be the source of our of all our new branches. All branches should be based All branches should always be based on the main branch. Main is our source of truth. We always should check out main first. And this is, in fact, exactly what is uh, said here. You should check out main. Never forget this. You should pull latest changes. That's what we just did. And only after that, we should start creating a new branch. Git checkout minus B task two. Nice. And from now we can we can just start making our first changes. So let's have a brief look what this article suggests us to do. So it says export access key and export secret key. I have them exported already. Uh -huh. For example, if I run AWS S3 LS, it will give me, let's say, list of my S3 buckets, storage units in Amazon S3. What we just do is write our first configuration. So we'll have two files, fighter.tf and main.tf. In provider.tf, we need only this. Actually, we, we would like kind of freeze the provider version and do this complex stuff, but not now. For now, we just configure these default behavior. I will switch to US East one. This will be my default, I will say region. And in main.tf, I will configure my first AWS instance. I will steal this example from here. And please don't uh, treat me wrong. It is completely okay to, um, to to copy paste examples, especially from the official documentation, especially in case of Terraform. And we'll be doing a lot of these things during this class. And you shouldn't like uh, have everything like information about each and every uh, parameter resource uh, or configuration or possible combination of these thing, things in your head. You should always be comfortable with navigating. First thing first, first of all, official Terraform documentation. It's like a dictionary that you use, right? And after that, maybe you could consult with alternative resources like Stack Exchange, Stack Overflow, different community chats, and uh, so on. So, but always my recommendation. First thing you should go is kashicorp.com. Only after that, community blogs, third party resources, anything else. So what this code is doing, it is creating a resource called AWS instance. It is giving it an AMI ID. So I don't remember which exactly this ID stands for, 
but like probably Amazon Linux or Ubuntu. And you can think of AMI as a snapshot. Um, if you work with virtual machines, for example, you can create a virtual machine and snapshot it. And after that, you can deploy a clone of this machine and another clone, or you can restore from this snapshot. Same is done on Amazon. In fact, you can, at this point, consider Amazon as a giant hypervisor, which allows you to create your own snapshots and make virtual machines out of them. And also, obviously, there are uh, managed by AWS already prepared for us pre-baked snapshots or in Amazon terminology, AMI. Instance type means basically configuration and size of our VM. T2 means basically smallest instance Small, uh, smallest instance types that we have very usually usually you very often used for development uh, which stands for burstable performance instance second generation uh, there are also for example cpu optimized instances memory optimized instances storage optimized instances each of them will have different letter and different generations. So the, the very latest one is, I believe, if I'm not mistaken, T3, if not T4, but T3 for sure. And micro means smallest instance. There is also, for example, small, large, extra large, two extra, extra large, and so on, as well as nano. And this is what we, what I will use for my uh, for my class, and basically the tag, which stands for any arbitrary metadata. It can be name equals example app server instance. Uh, for example, we can add some like owner, say Vladimir. Interesting thing about name, it will be recorded into a dedicated field in AWS. And I will show you immediately after we apply this. So what I will do is run Terraform init. It is downloading some large file. Um, okay, very good. Terraform plan will display the changes that it will propose. And we can review the plan. It says one resource will be created and we can run Terraform apply. It will give us Terraform plan. Essentially, what Apply is doing, it, it is running Terraform plan, and only after that, it's applying. So we can review the plan once again, one more time. We can press yes. And we have an error. So the image ID, A, my, blah, 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 does not exist. Can anyone guess what this error means? uh maybe the ami id is not associated with three t3 dot nano the machine type that you're trying to use okay uh any any other suggestions sandeep uh this part doesn't exist the for your account uh that particular ami id or resource doesn't exist in aws mm -hmm. it does not exist in aws okay um one more uh, one more attempt o ola uh, what do you think i think it could be a region region 
Yes. Uh, what exactly regarding region? Maybe um, you're trying to configure or set up in a different region and access would be in a different region. Yes, that's that is totally right. And um, before I move forward, can I ask one more courtesy from all of you guys? If you are not talking at the moment, could you please keep your microphone muted? This is very important. So so we don't interrupt the flow. So Amazon consists of regions. Regions are, I would say, separated, dedicated set of data centers that I would say barely connect to each other. And this is done for uh, availability purpose. If, uh, I don't know, an earthquake happens in uh, eastern U in Western USA. Uh, Central Europe is not affected, and vice versa. If something happens in the Europe, Australia is not impacted, uh, and we have to pay for this. And by paying means it should con contain obviously separate building of course separate separate power separate internet connection lines and also we need to maintain separate set of amis separate set of snapshots that are stored that, that are stored on the storage local to this region and perhaps you remember very first time i switched my region from us west 2 into us east 1 this means I have to find out which Amazon machine image I need to provide, I need to specify. So let me real quick log in into my AWS account and find out which proper AMI ID uh, should I use in the region US East 1. It's very simple. Uh, I can just la start the launch instance wizard. And for example, this one in my North Virginia region, if you're using different region, you'll need to switch over here. I can select what instance type I would like to have. For example, this one. Uh, Sorry, this new interface. Amazon Linux gives me the AMI ID of 023, uh, 96CDD, and so on. Uh, and yeah, I can copy it from here. Copy, get back into my code, and paste. And let's run Terraform apply one more time. So Vitor is commenting that we can use data sources and very good and precise recommendation. I will demonstrate how to use data sources in maybe third or maybe in, in, in the class number four. But for now, we just copy paste and hard code our AMI ID. I understand it's not yet ideal and perfect, but we'll do small steps, one step at a time. We'll start from easy steps and I don't want to overwhelm you and overload you with everything at once. Now I can get back to our EC2 dashboard 
go to instances and there is our virtual machine running and that's what we're supposed to do that was our objective for now it is okay that we don't connect to it it is okay that we don't verify that it is working our goal is simply to get started to deploy our first resource later down the road we will um, configure uh, real virtual private cloud amazon vpc we will um, launch some instances inside we will use bastion hosts but this will be not now for now our primary goal we should never forget we haven't yet committed everything and if automation is not version controlled this means this automation does not exist so our task is to to finish this we need to repeat the same process that we did just half an hour ago but this time with the real code that actually de deploys something Yes, Sanjeev, very good question. So are we supposed to see the to-do tasks for the Terraform apply on the Trello board? Yes, you are, but I haven't yet created them for you. I will create these two tasks after we finish our today class. So no need to worry about this. And having said that, let, let's commit things. You should always be aware of what you are committing, what's the state of your repository, and what is happening. It's like driving a car. When you drive a car, you should be aware in which lane you are, what's your speed, and what's your direction. Same here. So we shouldn't like commit like everything. We should be precisely and certain about what we are committing and why. So which files out of these six you think we need to add to our commit let, yeah let me answer these questions for you guys main.tf and provider.tf yes very good But what are these files? These are Terraform TF state, which stores the actual information about what is deployed, and dot Terraform, which stores the provider code itself, the provider configuration. And we should, at least for now, avoid putting them into our version control. And uh, to make sure we don't accidentally commit them, we will add a file called oh, let me do this through code editor we will add a file called git dot git ignore what git ignore does it's an instruction for github to simply ignore these files and never ever attempt to commit them so we will add dot terraform terraform and everything within this folder dot terraform block.hcl terraform.tf state and terraform.tf state dot backup and let me fix this mis misprint terra terraform And now when we have this git ignore file when we run git status again it does not it does not anymore suggest us to uh, add this file only file that to be added is git ignore and we can add this or repo and 
we can safely, for example, from now run git add dot, uh, dot everything, for example, and making sure nothing that should not go to the repository does not go to the repository. We have pushed it. We have updated our remote repository. Now it has our second branch, and we can compare and create a pull request. When you create a pull request, make sure you write some descriptive names. For example, at first EC2 instance. Create a pull request. We can review what files have we changed. Um, let me also add one more thing to my git ignore. These, these do not enter sign, means trailing line is missing. Each file should end with this empty new line at the end, which means trailing new line. Th this is how. Uh, This is mostly right now for like historical reasons. However, in some cases it might make the difference. So always remember to add this end of line to your code. And every time you before you create a pull request, always go to this tab files changed and review these even for yourself before you submit it. This is how you can find more interesting changes, and this is how you make your code even even better, even before your review start. Uh, Okay, we have a lot of interesting, good questions. So um, people saying that I should include the log file into uh, version control system, very good feedback. But as I mentioned, uh, we are starting simple. And for now, it is okay that we don't commit to version control, TF state file and log file. Uh, we later down the road will configure locking of the state file. We'll configure remote state file, and this is how we should go. This is this is how this is this is the way we should be supposed to work always. But for now, we are not jumping right into the into the speed. We are not jumping directly into the complexities. We do it step by step. But no need to worry. We will cover everything, everything you're supposed to know to run Terraform in production, including managing log files. OK, so I have created my pull requests. And again, it's uh, Geoffrey's turn to review it. Geoffrey. What do you think? Hey, Geoffrey, are you with us? Okay, it's it's two two a.m. in his time. Probably, uh, probably it's too late. Okay, never mind. I assume. It was approved, and I will squash and merge it, remove these indexes, add first EC2 instances, name is good, confirm squash and merge. And also, one more thing, after you finished, 
after your code is reviewed. Or yeah, I would say even before your code is reviewed, after you finish like actual development, never forget to run Terraform destroy. Because we don't want to have our to leave our instances and uh, have really huge uh, infrastructure bill, right? And don't remember, don't forget that by default Terraform destroy ask you uh, to mm, to confirm. So always press yes and make sure everything is destroyed. And for today, this is the we will call it a day. Your home task is to get to start with Git uh, and to create your first EC2 instance. Don't forget that in order to consider home task completed, you should send us pull requests and have them reviewed and have them merged. Uh, and um, you'll have you'll see these tasks on your Trello board. Probably in uh, in a couple of minutes after we finish our current call. So I am I will stop presenting now, and um, I will.